your aims. Hey, what's up there, comrades? It's me, Nomad. Thanks for joining me today. We're going to be working on this uh, original Game Boy Color system. <coughs> this was uh, very generously donated to me in the channel from a co-worker of mine. And we're going to try and put a little bit of a shine back on this. Uh, you guys will be seeing this system again not too long from now, hopefully, but I'm going to do an OLED touchscreen mod on this. I'll give uh, full details on what the exact model and like production is of this mod when I get it in. But uh, right now, I just wanted to get it ready. Uh, it does work. I did test it. I'll show you guys every, like the bells and whistles of it working and all when I actually get uh, the mod and everything started. There'll be a good before and after. So uh, enough with the rambling, because you're going to be dealing with enough of that today from me. And let's just get to the uh, teardown. I'm going to actually try and show you guys a little bit step by step how you would go about disassembling a Game Boy Color and giving it a good old shine. This one's battery contacts are a little bit wonky, for lack of a better term, but they're actually not corroded from what I could see. And again, I have tested this and got it working, and I didn't need to fiddle around with the uh, battery terminal, so I mean, there's definitely something on them. I uh, don't know what it is, but we'll see. We'll see when we get inside and we get a better look. But it's not looking like your typical corrosion. And again, it, it didn't interfere with its functionality, not to mention that they're bent back a good bit, the spring ends. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's just stop babbling about them and get on in here. There we go. Ah, okay, so... I believe in the original Game Boy, the uh, ribbon cable is connected to the back of the Game Boy. This one is uh, completely separated. And this thin piece of metal here. Do I need to get a different bit to remove this RF shielding? Of course I do. But through the magic of editing, you'll never know I went anywhere. Okay, we're back in business. So I want to put those screws to the side. I don't organize my screws as much as I should. Um, this is a pretty simple system, so I'm not going to go all out on screw organization. Honestly, I don't even think there's going to be too many more screws that we need to remove. And I'm only removing this in the RF shielding because I want to actually be able to give it a real good cleaning. Yeah, there was some grime in there, too. It was just a little, little dirt. I mean, like I said, we're going for a deep clean, and it uh, looks like there was some battery acid leaking there. Oh. What is that? Uh, huh. I guess that's a water... I guess that's supposed to be like a water detector. I never noticed that on one of these. Okay. Well, we're going to put this to the side for right now, and we're going to keep on tearing down. So now we have the main system. We have our power switch. Everything, that was all working fine. I mean, there's no issues I could find so far the system. Yeah, there's some rust. Yeah, there's definitely some rust on the contacts. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you can see the rust there. Yeah, it also has some rust on the other side. It's nothing terrible, though. I mean, it could definitely be worse. I'm going to, before I get this completely off and we lose some of its stability, I'm going to flush out the switch and this potentiometer for the volume with a little contact cleaner. This just help clean them out. So can't really just take these parts apart. 
And you could, but you're probably going to do more harm than good. So it's better just to flush them out. And that'll loosen up any dirt grime that was in there. And when I give this a more thorough cleaning in a moment, I will flush out anything else that may have loosened up or got in there. So, back to the disassembly. Uh, just in case those screws here are different, I will put them to the other side. The other side of the mountains. Uh, yeah, so I guess I need to come up with things to talk about. Uh, it does actually seem to be a potentiometer here. I wonder exactly what that's for. We are too. I should probably look up, uh, before I do the actual mod, I'm going to see if I can find a schematic for this online and actually get all the details on uh, what some of this stuff is, because I'm not going to lie, I don't know. Alright, that's good, that's good. Alright, I'm not going to remove the screen for this because that's a big part of what the mod's going to be. So, I'll just deal with that when I come to it. But I will be cleaning up these buttons that are grimy and glittery. <laughs> so, I, it's, a, it's a clean dirt. Bloop. I'm going to show you what I have uh, going on off to the side here in a moment. I got a little bit of a bath going, some hot water, and a little bit of dish soap. Perfect for cleaning off all these little fiddly bits. And the system itself. Also, the main reason I use hot water is because that will help to encourage loosening up uh, well, not, you know, loosen up grime and dirt, of course, hot, hot water you use to clean things makes it easier, but it will also help the uh, rubber membranes kind of bounce back a little bit, because over the years they, uh, they just lose a little bit of their oomph. So I'm not going to worry about taking the screen out right now. So now we go back over to our main board. Uh... Everything on here looks pretty good. The speaker can use a bit of a dusting. I don't even really want to get rubbing alcohol involved with that. The speaker worked just fine. Um, yeah, I will. I will clean that a bit. Now that we're going to get into the actual cleaning of this, I will zoom you guys in a little bit more. I think I have a little zoom left. Yes, sir, I do. I got plenty of zoom left. Jeez. Look at that. Look at that go. All right. So, going to be real gentle here because you don't want to fuck up the membranes. There you go. Yeah, this is a little dirt. Nothing major. Clean off the button contact points. That's one of the most important areas to clean. Again, like I'm not seeing any corrosion. Actually, all coming up a good deal cleaner than I was expecting. Is a mind you that this is not a new system. Uh, this this is old. This is quite old. This is from the 90s. And uh, to my understanding, it got a good bit of use, and it looks like it did. It looks like a, a well-loved system. It is actually in really good shape. But you can tell they decorated it. They played with it. They kept it in with their art supply. Like they took it with them. Like you're supposed to. Like, that's the point of these systems. So I mean, this system lived a good life, and I'm happy to see that, and I'm more than happy to go ahead and give it another one. I hope bring it back. I guess it's not really bringing it back. It never died. I mean, the system still works, but uh, it's just not up the snuff to today's standards, baby! Like, uh, we need backlights. You no, know, we, we can't be doing all this uh, can only play while standing directly under our light source biz now. I, that's so 1990s. That's so early 2000s, you know? We don't do that here. Oh, man, that is... That is magical right there. That is... 
that rust spot, that is coming right up. Let's see, let's see how it goes on this side. Oh yeah. Alright, now, I was a little bit worried about trying to do this. Well, let's see if I can get this spring to pop back without breaking it. Oh, I got it pointing in the other direction. <laughs> oh, here we go. Bingo! I'd say that that's better. It's not perfect, but it is better. I'll take it. I ordered some replacement contacts. Uh, I think these are the same ones that are used in the original Game Boy DMG. Uh, so worst case, I just swap them out. Uh, but it looks like they're going to be fine. They were fine when I tested them. I cleaned them up a little bit, so it should be better unless I just messed up a solder joint, which is very possible. Uh, okay. This part gets a little bit annoying, so bear with me. I gotta get those contacts out. Come on. Oh, there we go. Ooh-wee! Okay. Okay. I see. I see where we're at with that. I see where we're at, but uh, you know what? Bam! Screw is looking nice. A spring, screw, whatever. Uh, I'm still really struggling to get used to working on camera. Uh, this one's not wiping down as nice. Let me let me load up a fresh Q-tip. This one's not cleaning as easily. Well, let's answer the question nobody asked. Is contact cleaner stronger than 99% isopropyl alcohol? Or, well, hopefully it's stronger but not stronger on my skin, right? It's not much stronger, but you know what was stronger? Flathead screwdriver. <laughs> you should be kind of gentle with these uh, contacts. They're nickel plated, and the nickel plating can come off pretty easily, especially if there's issues with rust or corrosion. But uh, this wasn't that bad, and even if I took some of the copper nickel plating off, it would have been fine, trust me. Um, in that one little spot, if I took a little bit off, it would have been fine. But now, more importantly, we need to make sure we get whatever's stuck in here. So I'm going to give a good spot clean on some of the worst spots here. And then I'm going to hit the rest with soapy water. Because I'm a savage. We're savages here. We don't hold back. Alright. Yeah, my Q-tip's not even gonna reach in there. So, uh, let's go. Let's, well, you know, first things first. Before I get any water on the Q-tip or anything, uh, let me clean out this contact. The cartridge connector. So, we got the contact cleaner there, and we got our toothbrush. I could feel the contact cleaner spray it off the toothbrush, flip it all over the place, just like when Bob Ross used to beat his brush on the easel. He always said the producer hated that, and the uh, video camera guy, because it would get all over, it would get all over them. He <laughs> said they used to have to wear schmocks. But, uh, you know, if I had a real staff here, I'd be giving them hell, just like Bob Ross. Alright. 
everything here looks like mint. I, I, there's no issues on this board. That tiny bit of rust, that was it. So, this is what I was talking about. Oh, zoom you out. Nothing fancy. Hot water and a little bit of Dawn to soap. And we're just going to dip our system in here. I'm not going to go so far as to go up into the stickers. I wish I could. But uh, I think there are people who sell replica stickers. But uh, and that just seems kind of cheesy at that point. It's like... If you need to replace the stickers and get fake stickers and you need to do all this to clean off your case, I seriously, at, at what point do you not just decide to uh, replace the case? They have some cool custom cases you can get nowadays and uh, yeah, just, just get a custom case. Mod the whole thing out. All the bells and whistles, you know? I. If it's not original, it's not original. It's not going to be. All right. All right. Yeah, granted, I'm replacing the screen, so this system's not going to be original, but the rest of it can at least be original. I'm going to just put that down. It's a real quick, like, slop job kind of thing. Um, I'm going to have to definitely cut after this because i got to wait for this stuff to dry. I will try to speed up the drying a little bit with a compressed air gun that I have. But, uh, yeah, for the most part, the only remedy for this is to just let it dry. Don't get anxious. Don't get cocky. Just let it dry. You can see I'm going a little bit up onto the bottom of the screen, but I'm really not trying to focus on that because I don't want to get actual water in there too much. So, that's about all the work I'm going to be doing with this toothbrush. But I will take over now with the Q-tip and some IPA. That'll help displace some of the water that got down at the bottom. You can still see some of that glitter there. The IPA is also a good bit safer to use around the screen. You do run into a little bit of an issue, though. The IPA will help remove the glue if you get too much under there. So, kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place <laughs> when it comes down to what to do with uh, cleaning around your screen. Dry wipe, um, isopropyl alcohol, but, uh, you know, just dry it off. Like, get a little bit on your Q-tip, squeeze it out, pinch it out. All right, I think I got most of the glitter. Not that there's anything wrong with glitter, guys. All right, I'm I'm over here with a uh, red nail polish on still from filming a video. Luckily, that video posted well before <laughs> this video and another one I just did. Um, just like I said, I, I promised you guys I'm going to try and get better with uh, consistency. So. This video is going to be coming out probably five days after recording and editing, I want to say. But there will be another video like three days before that. It's already in the system. It's already uh, set to launch. It's the first time I'm using that, so I'll see how that goes. And uh, if that goes as planned, hopefully I can start maybe dropping like quick videos that like, kind of come up and uh i'm like oh let me just get this out right now like just something quick simple no extra characters no acting just something a little bit similar to this but i just want to push it out and you know that that would be cool if i can just do a couple things like that every now and then but i also want to just keep things coming regular so you know just uh see how this all works out Hope you guys enjoy the content. I hope I keep getting better at making it. I am still enjoying making it. And, you know, that's if you're enjoying it and I'm enjoying making it, that's a winning, that's a winning description right there. That's, 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 that's winning. That's it. That's all it is. That's all there is to this. I just want uh, everyone to have fun and be happy.
Right? If only life was that simple, right? Just have fun and be happy. So this is the little... Uh, I don't, it's not RF, it's not radio, it's IR. This is the IR sensor, I believe. This is the, goes on the top of your system for when you're trying to do uh, wireless links and trades. Uh, it doesn't work. I, I've never seen it work. Um, <laughs> maybe it works now, I don't know. It never worked when we were kids. We could not get that to work for the life of us. But I do actually have a link cable. I do... Um, uh, you know, may, maybe if I can manage to grab some Pokemon games, I'll uh, I'll do a Link Cable Pokemon Battle uh, Game Boy DMG versus Game Boy Color, both modded out. <laughs> we can see uh, Pokemon Red versus like Pokemon Gold or something. That would be that would be kind of neat. What do you think? Is that something you guys would want to see? Some super old school Pokemon battling? <laughs> I mean, I got enough VMUs too. If I really wanted to, I could just start up a couple saves on Sonic and we could do some Chow battles. That was... <laughs> oh man, that was, it was ahead of its time, but it was also so stupid. It didn't really work. It didn't do anything, really. <laughs> it was bad. Uh, but we loved it. We were kids. Again, it, it was ahead of its time. It was a tiny little handheld video game system memory card. Like, <laughs> what was Sega thinking? I know they weren't the first to do it. I believe um, Sony actually beat them to it with the... Uh... Oh, God. I want to say Pocket Station. It's probably not the Pocket Station. It never made it over here on the States. But uh, Final Fantasy VIII had some mini games exclusive to it. That's how you actually were supposed to get some of the Guardian Forces. But uh, maybe one day on the channel I'll get to look at one of them. I wonder how much they go for. That would be interesting. Of course, I'd have to also then get Japanese games because it, the U.S. version of VIII just didn't have that. <clears throat> so, I don't know. That might be a little too much. So... I babble as much as I can babble at this very moment. We got some good amount of time here until all this stuff dries. Uh, it's going to happen, like, and it's going to be done. It's weird. You want to see it? It's going to be dry, and I'll show you the reassembly. It's going to be just like that. Right. Howdy, howdy. Um, we're back, and time has progressed, and things are dry. And also, like I said, uh, in the video that would be following this one, you'll get to see an example of the system working before and after. Well, while I was waiting for this to dry, I decided uh, I have a whole lot of Game Boy games to test it with, but I didn't really have any Game Boy Color games, and I happen to have a retro store up the street from me. So... Uh, I used to do some work with them. I used to do some uh, system repairs with them a uh, long while back. They have an in-house guy now. I'm not bitter. I'm not bitter. But uh, now, um, good people. They actually just moved locations and a uh, much nicer spot now. Shop seems to be much more on the up and up. And I'm happy for them. They're doing well. And that's, uh, that's great. Anybody in the hobby, um, we all deserve to catch a break and get ahead so uh all right let's see now game bit no sir i'm just stalling for time i guess uh, <laughs> we're going to get back to the game boy in a second but uh why not give it another moment to dry and get this cartridge clean so we can test it out Once we get the right bit. Why am I having trouble with this? This is the bit I use like all the time. <laughs> I think I would put like a little bit of nail varnish on the end of it so I would know. Hey, this is the small game bit. There we go. Oh. Yeah. And this is why I used to work with these people because they sell a lot of broken crap. 
All right, this thing is uh, <laughs> completely water damaged. This is probably going to get its own video. Um, yeah, I should have figured. Well, I'll show you the Game Boy Color work in a little bit with a Game Boy game. But uh, we're not going to be playing uh, Conker's Pocket Adventure. Uh, not right now. Nope. That is completely... Oh, man. That's, that's going to be a nightmare, isn't it? All right. All right. Whatever. Uh, moving along. Moving along. So the only piece I uh, forgot to give a good cleaning to is the RF shielding, which had a tiny bit of rust and just some general smears. So we're just going to get on that real quick. Uh, man, I am steamed about that Game Boy Color game, but uh, nope, I repair things, right? This is uh, a part of what my channel is. I repair things, so uh, I'll get that. I'll get that game working. Uh, <laughs> it's a shame I was just trying to say nice things about their shop and their business, but uh, seems like not much has actually changed, and. Uh, even though they have an in-house guy, it still seems like they only ever open things and clean them out when it comes back as a refund, which is not how you should do things. But we go on. I must digress. So now we go back to assembling the Game Boy Color. Right. Yeah, I do have a... I do have a number of known working Game Boy original games, and I'll just uh, boot one of them up. Guess we won't get the full revolution of the color palettes, but uh, we'll get something. <laughs> we'll get something. Alright. You know, something about the simplicity of these older systems. It's just nice to work on sometimes. You open up some of these newer ones and it's like, what the hell's going on? How many layers is the board? Like, you got you got a broken trace or a via? Good luck. Good luck figuring out how to fix a via, via if it's messed up. A you know, trace is one thing. But if the via's on something goes, you're in trouble. You're in big trouble, mister. Hmm. It would help if I put uh, <laughs> all the buttons and membranes back in, right? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That uh, that broken game just said, uh, that gutted me right there for a second. Yeah, I just... Uh, you like to think that uh, you have a nice little local retro shop and you can just pop in and grab something as good as tested and you can count on them and this thing man <laughs> looks like that thing's been through a war it has been through it It just looks like it's just straight up and sitting in a puddle. That's what it looks like. I'm not, not even going to sugarcoat it any more than that. It's thing probably went through someone's washing machine. It's bothering me more than it should. I didn't pay much for it. And if the video can uh, get me a few extra views, a few extra likes, some subscribes, then uh, it paid for itself, right? That's how I should be looking at it right now. I bought it to demo something on the channel, and that's what it is. It's something for the channel, and now it's going to very possibly have its own dedicated <laughs> episode, which I was not anticipating, but, you know, whatever. Rock on.
Ah, come on. Uh, the membrane's not sitting quite right. Nothing's going quite as planned, is it? <laughs> there we go. Membrane just doesn't want to work with me. Is there a proper orientation for this? Huh? I believe there was. Am I just babbling to myself? I'm pretty sure I am. That feels good. Uh, Oop. That's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. All right. That was for the metal plating. This is for the inside of the Game Boy. Let's get these screws back in here. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, the, the condition of that game is abysmal. It's, uh, <laughs> I can't let it go. It, it's eating away at me on the inside as we speak. Jeez. Uh, Some things never change, unfortunately. Uh, okay, it's all good. if I did something to try to remember how this went because that ain't right uh, that's definitely not right uh oh hot dog it looks like this should be it but those aren't, the posts aren't lining up. Did it go like this? No. Did it go like this? Yeah! Yes, queen! There we go. See, the, remember those uh, little puzzles in kindergarten trying to fit the square through the circle and whatnot? It's, uh, you know, I was, I was a pro. I was a pro. Give me three or four days, and I'll get that. I'll figure out where that triangle went. Or I'll at least figure out a way to get it to go through the square. You know what? I, you know, I don't think people get enough credit for that. When you manage to get a square through a circle... You know, that, that's ingenuity, you know, that, that's, that's a talent, that's a knack, that's a skill. You don't just do that, you know, like, thinking outside the box. <laughs> or, you know, just keep on hitting something until it does what you want. All right, and that's a 1950s dad method, or uh, just general electronics in the 80s, 70s, and 80s. You know, TV acting up, give it a slap. I'm glad we're past those days. Not because our IQ is better, but because nowadays um, you'd literally just completely destroy a TV if you did that. I mean, they, they're built like crap. <laughs> All right. Let's see. How do we get this to go back together? Oh, there we go. Oh my gosh, is it that simple? All right, so that's off. That's all the way up. Let me uh, 
put enough screws in here to test it. And I'll grab a Game Boy game and we'll give this a quick test. Alright, that'll hold it together for now. Let me go grab a battery. I can actually talk to you guys because I'm using my lapel microphone. And uh, I should still be within functioning range of it, even though I'm in another room. Where am I? Where have I gone? Oh crap, I dropped a battery. I got it. And I guess to demo the uh, system, we're going to go with the ever-famous Tetris. Uh, this just got really unexciting, but uh, <laughs> there we go. Bing. Oh yeah. Uh, can you see the... There we go. Oh, I'm going to have to play while looking at my camera screen. Is the Tetris music copyrighted? Oh my god. This is really hard to do, okay? I'm looking at the viewfinder. Okay, uh, this is, um, there you go. Boom. All right, enough of that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you can see it works. There is a little bit of color. The Game Boy Color by default did add a few little color palettes here and there to the old games. So, I mean, that's neat. But, um... Yeah, I don't, I didn't get to uh, show you well enough. Uh, this is the game I literally just purchased while waiting for the shell of this Game Boy to dry. And uh, it looks like somebody was waiting for this game to dry. Oh man. I'm unhappy with this. Uh, well, that's a problem for another video though. So, without any farther ado, here's our polished up Game Boy Color. Looking almost as good as the day she, uh, oh, never mind, day that she was unboxed. Uh, I have a new battery cover coming as well with the mod. So, uh, next time you th see this guy, um, going to get some heavy duty work going on into it. So, this video's gone on long enough. Thank you for joining me, comrades. Without you, I am me. And without me, what am I saying? I don't know. All right, comrades. Thanks a lot for staying here, hanging out with me, having a good time. I love you. Stay well. Stay safe. Till next time.